Hey, uh, is my sound okay? I don't know if anyone can hear me or not. I have the sound muted, so let me know if this is coming through. Okay, so I think you guys can hear me. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm just gonna, I don't know how many people are gonna trickle in, so I'm just gonna kind of run this for a few minutes. I added a few things this morning. Um, I have that little camera pan at the beginning, and I updated some camera movement. Uh, I got this treadmill thing going on, uh, which right now is just like a super simple scrolling texture, and it like adds forces to whatever touches it in the direction it's facing. Kind of put the time scale. Uh, and yeah, I just have like a few basic obstacles going on right now. Uh, if there's anything you guys want to see, feel free to shout it out. Um, otherwise, I'm probably just going to run a few races right now and let you guys watch. Uh, and then I'll start expanding what I have right now. And hopefully we'll end up with like a long, longer obstacle course once this is done. Hopefully it'll be interesting. And if you have any questions about like anything else, um, how I'm doing anything about the game itself, uh, feel free to let me know. Oh, the video's glitchy. Uh, I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. I'm just using XSplit. Uh, if you guys have suggestions, like I don't know if anybody has experience with this, uh, but if anybody knows like settings I should be using, this is like my first time. <laughs> hey Trevor, how's it going? Okay, cool, cool. Here, we'll do some random dogs. Yeah, if anything does like start glitching out though, let me know because I probably won't notice right away. Uh, also, like, as you see me working on this stuff, uh, everything here is, like, pretty early, so, like, the setup for the races and for building courses is all stuff that I've done just kind of in, I don't know, like, less than a day's work total, uh, so <laughs> the process is, like, not ideal right now, um, so don't judge me too hard and definitely don't take inspiration from the workflow I have going on. <laughs> yeah, the tails are like pretty ridiculous. Um, I probably am gonna have to tone them down a little bit. Uh, at the low end, they like don't wiggle too much, but as they get to like medium and full length, then the dogs just kind of like are controlled by the, their tails pretty much. So I'm probably gonna have to make them like softer or like incorporate them into balance at some at some point. But for now, they can still kind of move. So I'm just leaving it alone. And yeah, right now, like, when they get to the end of the course, um, I don't have, like, a win condition or anything in right now, so uh, I just have them, like, I'll have all their, like, strength just giving out, so they kind of just take a rest. So that's how you can tell when a dog's finished, it just lies down. <laughs> Though some of them uh, aren't very good at walking, so they kind of lie down before they get to the end. Actually, I'm gonna really quick. I'm just gonna put a cheat on my camera so I can grab dogs uh, and like drag them around. Cause like some of these guys are getting pretty stuck. Oops, oh no.
Yeah, this treadmill I just added like in the past 20 minutes, so it might not be working perfectly, but I think it's okay. Should probably bump up the speed of it, honestly. It looks like kind of slow. Yeah, I'm excited for the Tails too. They're, uh, <laughs> they added like way more than I thought they would. I had a bunch of people kind of bugging me to add them and I kind of just brushed it off for the most part, but it turned out to be like a really fantastic idea and I'm really glad that I put them in. Hopefully I'll have like a bunch more tail varieties than this when the final game is actually out. And hopefully they'll have like more movements other than just wagging, which is pretty much all they do right now. Um, I tried to get them to tuck, but because of like really varied tail shapes, it was kind of tough to do, especially when the tails got like super long. So I'll have to look into that more, but I'm sure there's more stuff I can do. <laughs> yeah, these ball these like uh, floating balls are kind of wreaking havoc right now. <laughs> Is a traffic jam. <laughs> Looks like we got the winner. Yeah, he was doing pretty good, but you just couldn't quite make it. I can also do this really quick if we want to see like a full race with like just the yellow dogs. Just bump this in. Here, I'll let this play out first, but... Yeah, some of these dogs are, like, real unfortunate side uh, results of evolution. It didn't always work out in their favor, but <laughs> some of them turned out nice. Here, they're all winners. Okay, let me restart this. Now we just got yellow, guys. Oh my god. Sorry, one fell off and he was in the lead, so the camera tracked him for a second. Yeah, vote for a yellow dog in this case is probably pretty... A pretty safe bet. You can place bets if you want, but there's no prize. I think my favorite thing about this course is that by far the most nefarious obstacle are these just like little bumps right here, <laughs> which they're like smaller than speed bumps. They're super tiny, but these guys have no awareness of like where their feet are actually gonna be going when they pick them up. They just kind of have constant walk cycles, so uh, any terrain variability like that is just like death. Pretty good spread. Oh, we got the winner. Yeah, so as predicted, <laughs> the yellow dog has, has won out. Also, a pretty good result of them just like laying down once they finish, um, especially because they all target the same point, is that when they get to the end, they all kind of just end up naturally collapsing into a pile, which is pretty good, especially because their tails are all still going. <laughs> Though some of them have kind of trouble finishing when there's too many other dogs in the way.
give this guy some help. Okay, I'm going to do one more real quick, just with like these default modified dogs, and then we can start modifying this course. Also, like right now, there's a pretty huge advantage given to anything that spawns in the middle of that platform because if they spawn on the edge, then there's like a pretty good chance that they're just gonna kind of wobble off <laughs> when they do that first drop. <laughs> so it's probably not the most fair race right now, but it's not super important. Oh yeah, three of them are already gone. This was kind of a massacre. Oh wow, super close race. I don't actually know who won. We can say it was this guy. Yeah, so I'm about ready to move on to modifications. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for like what you want to see, like I don't know, certain obstacle layouts or anything, uh, feel free to just like shout them out or whatever. But let's see what we have going on. So right now, this bottom part is like pretty ridiculous. They can do slopes down. Um, that's no problem because they'll just tumble. Up is kind of not ideal, but we could definitely like, hold on a second, where is this? We could definitely, give them like an initial down slope instead of just an amazing drop at the beginning. We could try that. Or we could do like a treadmill, maybe treadmill slope that goes up. That would actually maybe work pretty well. Yeah, the default dogs are like much better than the random dogs. Uh, you can get like, if you like actually breed them appropriately, you can get pretty good uh, like dogs that are better than the default dogs. But when they're just like completely random genes like I was just doing, it's like kind of a shit show. Big screen, oh, when? Where is, uh, where are you right now? I have no idea if the treadmill is going to support this. Theoretically, it should be fine, but let's find out together. Let's actually just test this really quick. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like <laughs> you're in an event space or something. That's pretty awesome too, though. I mean, this is a sport that deserves to be televised, I think. Okay, I have no idea. I really hope this will work. It should theoretically work. Okay. I think if we bump up, actually, yeah, they might just all fall. <laughs> they might just all fall off. <laughs> if I bump up the treadmill speed, this might work pretty well though. Let's try it. Here, I can just modify this real quick. Let's do. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm into that. Let's see, I can get this even kind of like a bigger launch. 
Um, I'm gonna give them like a wider berth too, because otherwise the edge guys are just gonna immediately fall off. So let's do this. Um, could be like kind of fancy with this actually. This is gonna be like not ideal, because again, I don't have like a good workflow for this setup, but I think if we do kind of just like this sort of thing, we can maybe like get them to go towards a central, just kind of like funnel them. I don't know if this is gonna, I might just have to scrap this. But let's see real quick. Um, okay. Let's see how this works. <laughs> okay, this wall's gotta be taller, I think. But that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a pretty good start, I think. Oh man. So let's bump these up. Oh god. Uh, the colliders are like slightly off because I'm doing this in a really strange way. Um. Oh god. Okay, no, I can't do that. Uh, hold on. We're gonna do... Again, this workflow is not ideal. That's something I gotta work on, but for now, just like super quick. I think, okay. I think this will be better. <laughs> okay, so now let's see. Okay a good place for these guys to land we could do like a sort of box and if they make it into the box then they could keep going from there I don't know what the best option is when I think about it um, let's see I'm gonna make a landing box I don't know if it should be a platform or not. Let's make it like somewhat wide. Um, okay. And then currently I have nodes for them to race towards. So let's put this in a better spot. And give us a texture. Okay, so we'll be going towards this guy with a bigger trigger area. I'm doing like that. Yeah, this is all done in Unity right now. Um, so like this editor area is like not something that I set up on my own. Um, I have some custom stuff going for other like pin editors and stuff, but as far as these courses go, this is all just like stock Unity editor stuff at the moment. Um, as far as like placing cubes and the like widgets and stuff that you see. Um, 
Um, okay, so I'm gonna have them go to this thing. But that seems like too easy. I feel like they need a bunker. Yeah, this is just a one-man project right me, uh, right me, right now. Um, so it's just me. I think at some point that I would like to bring a, like a dedicated artist on because art is like not really my strong suit, especially once you get into like modeling. Um, I'm much better at 2D than 3D, and even then, I'm like, definitely not <laughs> like professional quality. Uh, so at some point, I'll probably bring on an artist, but I want to make sure I have this whole workflow. Uh, and concept like super solid before wasting anybody else's time make this thing go let's say this thing's gonna go fast oh thanks i'm i'm glad you like how it looks now i'm pretty happy with a lot of what i have going on um and, but the thing is, I want to also add like a decent amount of world building and stuff to this game. Um, so the dogs are going to be obviously like a big part of the gameplay. <laughs> oh my god. Um, a big part of the, like, the, like the main stuff that you're actually doing. And they're, they're definitely the focus of the game. But I would also, like I also am going to want to have um, just like actual NPC characters that you talk to and... Uh, like you're going to be able to go into town and do stuff and so I'm going to need art for the town and that sort of thing um, and it's all stuff that like I could do but having somebody else do it would be way quicker and way better I think anyways I don't know we'll see I, I haven't like committed to bringing somebody else on yet it's just something I've been thinking of been entertaining the thought Yeah, that's the other thing, because I don't really consider myself an artist specifically. Uh, I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that I haven't even thought about that would, that like, if, if I had an actual artist on the team, that they could just kind of be like, oh, if you do this thing, you know, this X, Y, and Z would look way better, or, you know, just like, I'm sure there's a ton of stuff I haven't even thought about. It's the type of thing where, like, once it's once something you don't really notice something um when it's not there but once you have it you could like never go back and i feel like there's definitely room for stuff like that on this project but we'll see at the very least i'm definitely gonna have uh somebody dedicated to do music and sounds because that's an area that i have literally zero skills in so it would be a huge disservice to this project to have me try to do all of that on my own. It would be a disaster. Um, okay, so I think I like that little just like blocking ball thing. Um, let's see what should be next though. kind of music do I think I'll have I'm not completely sure yet I want it to be like really goofy and fun whatever it is I don't have like a specific style in mind but the whole game like I don't know I want people to laugh while they play it so I feel like the soundtrack should be could should kind of have the same goal um, like it should be something that's kind of funny out of context and then in context it should hopefully work with the game as well um, but like yeah I don't I don't have like a specific thing I've been thinking of uh, it's not something I put a ton of thought into yet. I need to put more thought into it. I'm starting to get to the point where like I would really benefit from having at least sound effects in the game. Uh, so it's something I gotta start really considering more seriously. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think I should put after this like platform if they make it that far? I'm wondering what the best thing to do here is. Could do kind of like a pachinko fall, and then they could just like land down here somewhere. We could try that. Let's see. 
see, where is this? Ooh, a funnel's good. Could do a, we could try a funnel. Um, I might just delete these things actually. Let's try, let's see if we can do a funnel with just like Unity stock prefabs. Um, ooh, how's this gonna work? Okay, you're gonna have to use your imagination for this funnel, I think. Actually, I have an idea. <laughs> this might be interesting. Um, let's do instead of okay, we're still gonna do a funnel, but it's gonna be a funnel that's made out of that escalator stuff that I have going on. Treadmill, I guess, is a good name for it. Texture is probably scrolling the wrong way. I think this is actually going to make it move up, which is what I want. Uh, we'll find out. Okay, this is like real ugly, but I think it'll work. I guess we need a place for them to land too. That's probably pretty important. Let's just do, we'll drop in a, one of these guys. Hold on. 
Okay, we'll see if this works. Um, what is this? I, I don't know if you're talking about the game or... Well, I guess you're probably talking about the game. Uh, this is a game I'm making called Wobble Dogs, uh, and I'm working on a kind of racing section for it. It's a game about raising and training uh, these little digital physics dogs. Um, there's a bunch of genetic stuff going on under the hood for controlling look and proportions and patterns and that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, this is kind of like a mini game type thing where you'll be able to race them. And I'm building a track right now. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> I have no idea which direction that treadmill's going in, but <laughs> at least they ended up where they're supposed to. I'm actually curious, I think... Oh, the treadmill force was super low, so let's raise it. Okay, there we go, yeah, that's way better. Okay, this is gonna be much better, hold on. We're gonna give this a force of 100. It was at 1, so it was basically not doing anything. Um, Let's see. I think these treadmills are a good addition. I'm pretty into how much I'm able to get out of them so far. That one, <laughs> those guys are kind of having some problems. We're like losing a lot of dogs at the beginning. I might remove that ball just, well, I don't know. Okay, I'm curious about this. <laughs> oh man, I wish the camera was like a little bit better. I scraped the camera together in like five minutes. I guess we can look from up here. Oh man, we could get even trickier with this if we wanted to. Like I could put some of those balls that move back and forth on oh that's a good idea lost dogs onto a separate track let's revisit that but i like that idea um i'm gonna put a few of those like moving balls on this treadmill area so let's see We could give this a whole kind of patrolling, kind of like a patrol to go on here. So let's, because I have kind of a node system set up for them. It should be pretty, pretty robust. Uh, the dogs can fight against the treadmills, but they probably won't win. <laughs> um, on a flat surface, if the treadmill is low enough, I think it's pretty reasonable, but on a, uh, hold on a second, start this guy over here, um, but on like any sort of slope surface, or if the treadmill is going fast enough, then it definitely is not going to be good for the dogs. Okay, let's try this. Oops. I think it's just wreaking havoc. Oh, I like this guy in the front. He's got a extra leg mutation. I might actually have to tone down the chance for that to happen, because it was meant to be like pretty rare, but 
I've gotten a decent amount of dogs that just like right off the bat start off with an extra pair of legs, which is probably, I don't know, it's funny, but I wish it wasn't as common. I think these side treadmills are like not doing anything. I guess in a case like that, they would be useful, potentially. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be okay, guys. Ah, he's trying so hard. He's so close. Uh. <laughs> oh man. Success. There's the champion. I feel like he deserved to finish before I restart because that's pretty good. He's so close. a victory flop real quick and <laughs> we'll get back to it <laughs> come on man I think okay I think he's good yeah the funnel definitely needs something else it's like pretty bare bones right now and also these like side things pretty much only serve to get in the way I might I think if I do this then that gives some like more coverage for when they get thrown out, which is good. Might just like move these in a little more. Though they need a space to actually like get out, so there we go. I wonder if they can fit through there. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, the, so the funnel needs some more stuff though, so let's see. Uh, one thing that we could do is we could kind of, here, let's try something fun. Um, what if we put another treadmill right here, so they kind of have to hop up and over? Let's see what this does. Actually, really quick, this thing, this bonker, I'm going to slow down how fast it goes so that it doesn't kill off all the dogs or I shouldn't say kill off because that's like pretty morbid but you know what I mean just so you guys know canonically dogs that fall off the stage do not die so don't worry about it okay that's much better I don't know if it hit anybody that time. Oop. <laughs> okay, moment of truth. Oh no. <laughs> oh god. I think that treadmill is going the right direction. Maybe it's not. Let's see. Oh, no, it totally is. I just had to give it more force, so we'll do that for next time. <laughs> no, we can totally make the slope work. This treadmill just has to be stronger. I kind of like it like that. Ooh, that's a pretty good funnel at the bottom. Though, oh, no, they can, like, just fit through there. Though, like, for genetically modified dogs, they're absolutely not gonna be able to get through they're just gonna get stuck <laughs> though there's actually something else we could try with that hold on I got an idea first this treadmill I'm gonna bump it up so it stays but then we're gonna use this like bonker system we're gonna do something outrageous
this thing is gonna get larger. is what we're going to do. Oh, oops. Hold on a second. Okay. Anyways, we haven't figured it out yet. I'm going to use this as kind of like something to force them through that hole if they get stuck. So it's going to be up here. Actually, I kind of like that this can go through here anyways. It'll be some good physics stuff. We'll just do that for now. Um, this. And then. Oh, thanks so much. That's really cool to hear. I'm glad people are liking this project because it's really weird for me to work on something that in development, like early in development, is like actively interesting to people. Usually stuff I work on is like not interesting until the end, if at all. So this has been like really, really rewarding to work on. So like seriously, everybody has been watching me work on this. Um, like, thank you so much. And I'm really glad that you guys are interested in it. And again, I'm just going to add for anybody who's new to this stream. I don't know how many people are popping in and out. Um, but the workflow that I have going on for making this course is horrendous. <laughs> and I know that, and I apologize for it. I haven't had time to make a tool to like properly make these courses yet. Oh my god, five of them fell off that time. That's pretty sad. Yeah, this is a pretty brutal round. <laughs> Which we use. Sorry, camera's awful. So theoretically, if they do get stuck there, this giant thing should squish them through. But I guess none of these guys got stuck. But yeah, when I actually get like these courses official, because this one's like pretty fun to make, but I. Like anything that I officially add to the game is probably not going to come for a bit as far as these courses go. Um, I want to make sure that they are like, I don't know, at least as wild as this. Um, I don't want it to just be like really standard stuff. I want it to be interesting. Um, when I was a kid, uh, I used to play this game with my brother and sister, um, or at least by myself. Maybe I'm just imagining it with my siblings, but I think it was with other people um, where we would like find these little pill bugs in the backyard and we would put them like early. Yeah, like the game was you'd put them in like a bucket and then if they were able to climb out of the bucket, then they would move on to like the next bucket and there would be like a whole series of things for them to do. And then, you know, they go back into the ground. It's not like we kept them or like anything. And it wasn't really dangerous for them. Um, but a lot of what I've been thinking about in terms of the obstacle course design for this game is kind of based off of that uh it's just kind of like i don't know the the feeling of watching these little like critters walk around an environment that's not necessarily made for them but like exploring it and getting some sense of progress is really interesting to me so i don't know i'd like to capture that feeling somehow um what's i gonna do 
uh homemade tools for landscape creation gross and complicated yes i agree <laughs> not easy to do um just the stuff that i have set up for like the in-game pin builder right now uh, is like pretty bare bones so that, like that users themselves can i just want to see how these genetic guys can work with that whole um so that users themselves can like create pins and additions and pipes between the pins and that sort of stuff um, even that, like, it's a super bare bones 3D editor, and I assumed when I started working on it that it was going to be fairly straightforward, and that's absolutely not the case. Uh, making 3D editors is, like, incredibly complicated, and I have so much respect now for anybody who's ever had to do that. Um, there's just, like, a million tiny usability concerns at every turn that you would never think about. Um, so hopefully making a track creator would be a little bit easier, because I'm not at least initially planning on giving it to other people to use. It'll just have to be internal, so it can be a little more obtuse. But if I ever want to make it something that like other people can use, then it's going to be a disaster. Uh, do, do dogs have presence of mind to not walk off the edge? No, they absolutely don't. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if you... Uh, whoa, oh my god. That guy went flying. That's a pretty good strategy, honestly. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you've seen like in the editor, but I have these little nodes that I'm placing. Um, and right now the dogs have kind of a rudimentary AI system that is uh, that I'm piping into with with this obstacle course stuff. And I'm basically giving them like, what's the next node that I need to go to? And they'll walk towards that node. So if I made like an S-shaped thing, I could put a bunch of nodes around it and make it so that they'll probably not fall off if they follow the nodes correctly and walk okay. Uh, but there's nothing like actually stopping them from just walking directly off of a cliff. Which again, it might be something that I, I actually go and put into their AI at some point. Uh, but as of now, it's not something that they know about. And they can navigate a maze, kind of. So again, I have them running like a very specific subset of their artificial intelligence for this uh, obstacle course stuff right now. So they can navigate a maze if I set up nodes telling them how to navigate a maze. In terms of the actual game, uh, the way that their AI works is as they kind of walk around, they don't have any awareness of things they haven't seen yet. Um, and as they walk around, they place nodes just kind of like where they've been and they connect those nodes to other nodes that they can see from their current location. Um, but what that does is it means that if they've ever walked through a maze in the past, they would know how to get through it again, um, assuming that they still remember those connections because there's some ability for them to kind of forget things over time. Um, or for connections to change because if the environment updates and they haven't seen it then they don't know uh, that things aren't how they imagine them to be. Uh, so they can navigate a maze if they've managed to get through it before, but they can't um, like just magically figure out how to get through a maze, if that makes sense. Uh, as of right now, yeah, they'd still have to hit node 2. Um, when I actually, like, put final courses into the game, I will probably end up making it so that skips are impossible, but if that is something that I ever think might just not be realistic for whatever reason, because, like, I'm using physics and it's not random, but, like, essentially it's random. Uh, it's like a controlled random. Uh, I'll probably have to have some sort of thing in so like if they are closer to a further along node than a previous one then I might just update their position or something I'm not sure yet uh, previous projects so I have some experience with things similar to this I, uh, I worked on the Sims 4 for three years after I graduated college as a gameplay programmer uh, obviously like a lot of that is very different than this and it's not like I was <laughs> in charge of like <laughs> the AI or anything um, but I've touched I've touched and like thought about stuff like this in the past to some extent uh, and then the last uh, project that I did because I about like roughly a year ago at this point uh, I quit my job there and went solo um, and then the first project that I worked on after this was just like a small like 30 minute game called Animal Inspector, another solo project. Um, 
and uh, there was not like anything super advanced in that. It was kind of like a story based game. Like uh, a lot of compar- people got a lot of a lot of comparisons to Papers Please in kind of terms of what you actually do. The most advanced thing there was that um, I was doing some kind of like text parsing stuff to figure out if you misspelled stuff or um, if you made uh, uh, what's it called or if you're writing gibberish. And so there was like some somewhat complex work I did to kind of differentiate misspellings from gibberish. Um, but this is definitely the most advanced project I've ever worked on um, in terms of like physics and AI that I'm doing myself. Uh, is there a way to have obstacles moving around respond to doggos? Uh, there is definitely a way to do that, but I don't have a system in place for it currently. Uh, I could definitely do it, um, but I don't have XSplit set up to record my Visual Studio set up right now, so it would be extremely boring for you guys to watch a blank screen while I tried to implement something like that. <laughs> um, when I was on The Sims, I was specifically gameplay programming. This is a pretty good set of dogs right here. Oh my god, is that Ryan McCord? I won't give away your username. Six-legged dogs are pretty good. <laughs> uh, technically, also, the number of legs that dogs can have is completely uncapped. Um, so it's like, they have to go through these things I'm calling super mutations in order to get, uh, I think it's like past, might just be past six, I think it's past eight legs. Um, anything past that, they have to get super mutations, which is like basically you can only get one super mutation per breeding, um, and it's incredibly rare to even get that. Uh, so it's not going to be common, but they can kind of go unbounded. However, uh, your computer will definitely not be happy with you if you go past a certain amount of legs. So it's probably something that I'm going to actually have to cap, though I haven't currently. And you are absolutely welcome. I am happy that there's actually people watching this stream. <laughs> I've never really done this before. Um, purely aesthetic mutations like two heads. So there are kind of... So one of the things that I'm trying to do with this game is making sure that nothing is purely aesthetic. Uh, that everything kind of has some feedback into the gameplay loop somehow. Um, so like right now, even patterns, although currently don't really do much, uh, one of my plans, and I've started to implement it but I haven't gotten that far yet, is that dogs will kind of respond differently to dogs that are similar to them. So if a dog is like only grown up around other dogs that look exactly like them and only socialize with those type of dogs, and then like is super old and meets a dog that has like some wacky pattern and looks completely different, uh, what I would like to have, and again, this hasn't isn't actually in the game yet, so we'll see what ends up happening. But what I would like to have is that that dog is kind of like wary and reacts um, not necessarily well towards that new dog because it's like a crazy thing it doesn't recognize. Um, so even like you can have multiple tails right now, um, and that's mostly just aesthetic, but it also affects balance because those tails are wobbling around and affecting the physics. So I don't I want. I want kind of like everything to have a gameplay purpose, and it's maybe a pipe dream, but oh no. We'll see uh, See where I get with it. Sorry, I haven't really been adding much to this course because I've been like answering questions. Uh, is there anything you guys think would be good after this funnel? I haven't really given that much thought yet. We can also just watch more dog races, it's up to you guys. So there's no perfect dog, um, <laughs> though I like the idea of having a perfect dog. Uh, right now, everything mutates based off of kind of the... everything Mutations are all like modifiers based off of like a default dog that I have set up, which is those pink cubes that you've seen. Um, so that's... 
it's not really definitely not the perfect dog but that's like the most generic dog um and i'm sure if i did like some genetic algorithms with some complicated components we could come up with a dog that's like incredible at walking based on it's just like leg set up and everything but i haven't really tried to do that um so there's not really i'm there might be a perfect dog but who knows we haven't seen it yet and these dogs are probably not good at swimming i'm gonna call that right now though i have thought a little bit about implementing stuff like mud and water and so i want to try it out at some point but i haven't put any time into that yet actually swimming might not be that bad i'll have to get back to you on that um trampoline oh how would i do a trampoline i could definitely do a trampoline uh but i would need to code some stuff and on stream when i don't have my coding being streamed would be a little bit not ideal so some other time for that probably we can definitely play dog pachinko though dogs cannot have less than four legs currently but i have thought about it so at some point maybe um more naturalistic dog behavior i could definitely show um let's see what time is it it's like three let me no that's fine um let me do let's do a little bit of dog pachinko and we'll just like run a race or two with that and if you guys want if other people are interested too then i can just kind of show some generic pin gameplay stuff um it's not like super fine-tuned yet so it's not gonna be like the most natural thing in the world but i can kind of explain what's generally going on if there's interest in that so let's just do a quick dog pachinko session and then uh we'll move on to that if that's of interest. Okay, so this is just for like a quick no must setup. I'm gonna do this and we're just gonna disable the mesh render just for like ease of dog pitching or ease of viewing. see it's the best way to do this actually I might have hold on okay I'm gonna put an object here and I have no idea if it still functions, because I haven't touched it in a while. But if it does, then it'll be interesting. It's not actually that interesting, it's just kind of funny. Also, I apologize that there's no music in the stream. Um, I very briefly looked into it, and it looked like I had to figure out some sort of way to like either ask permission um, or just use like existing royalty-free stuff, and I didn't have time to look into it. So hopefully, it's not too quiet. Also, winged dogs would be pretty hilarious, <laughs> but then I'd have to implement some sort of flying. Maybe, maybe not. I definitely want crazier mutations uh, than what I've shown, but I haven't come up with any great ones yet. And I'm also not sure how much I want to talk about my more secret details. Um, I want to make sure that this game has some amount of surprise, even for people who've been following it for a long time. Uh, so there's some stuff that I am like fairly sure I'm going to put in that I haven't mentioned anywhere yet that I might just kind of keep under wraps for a while. I don't know. We'll see. It's hard to just not talk about everything. 
but I think it'll be good to have a few secrets. Though, obviously, most people who end up playing this will not have uh, been keeping track of its development, so that's the other aspect. Um, okay, this is like maybe Pachinko. I don't know if this is going to work or if they're just going to get stuck, but we'll find out. Um, I'm also just like really quick because it's like impossible to see otherwise. We'll just turn, we'll make these invisible. So this is like super ugly, but I think it'll work. Okay, so let's see. Uh, will I make more devlog videos? I definitely want to. Um, I'm glad that they're interesting to people. The only thing that's holding me back is that I feel like I need to wait until I have like an actual good topic. Um, I don't want to just make it about like, oh, the past two weeks I built some user interface. Like, I don't think that's very interesting to people. Or maybe I'm wrong, maybe it is. Um, but I want to just like, I'll make them whenever I feel like there's something that merits me talking about it in detail. Um, but I definitely want to make some more of them because they're pretty fun to do, though they're like pretty time consuming also. Oh man, these guys are <laughs> not doing so well. <laughs> I have not played Marble Blast, but maybe I should go check that out. Oh my god, this is a disaster. Also, um, there's obviously like, I haven't been mentioning it, but there's a few bugs going on, or things that I want to fix. Like right now, uh, the dogs kind of go wild with their turning. The turning is kind of like really screwed up. Um, so they'll like try to turn in the air or like while upside down and it creates like really unnatural and bizarre movement. So I need to do better with that, some of that stuff, but something not too bad. Okay, dog pachinko. It's pretty successful. <laughs> also that item is like ridiculous. Oh no, this poor man's stuck. Right now, the camera just focuses on the dog who has the farthest X position, so uh, <laughs> it's not really accurate for who's in first, but here, let's go look at this whole setup. Oh my god. Okay, really quick, I'm just gonna restart this with dogs that are just generic um, really fast, just so that we have like more that are getting farther, um, and then I can show like some pin gameplay if people are interested do like the last the last race so place your bets I guess though it's kind of hard to tell who's who it's a pretty successful initial launch we lost like four we lost three we lost three of them it's not that bad these dogs have seen worse Yeah, tail guy is an interesting bet because he has a tail, but he also has like really distorted front legs, which makes it kind of hard to move. Uh oh. No, there we go. Oh, that one missed like all the pachinko things. <laughs> I didn't set that up so well. It looks better from a distance than it actually functions. That's okay. It's probably gonna win. Yeah, these guys, these things are like definitely at their most relatable when they're <laughs> having some sort of movement problem. <laughs> I've been really happy with how uh, how much emotion that I've been able to get out of them, though, without doing, like, pretty much, I mean, the, the, it's all coming from their movement for the most part. They have those, like, doofy faces, but they're just, like, a single, single drawing. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, it did its job, though. Um, so hopefully as I can expand their number of movements and stuff, that's only going to get better. Oh no. 
Oh, this one's trapped between an invisible wall. <laughs> so it's probably just... <laughs> oh, both of these. These probably aren't going anywhere. Here, we can maybe shift them a bit. We'll, we'll cheat. This is kind of off-center, I think, anyways. I don't think that the end node is working because they're kind of just walking around in circles over here. I think something, I think there's a bug going on. I think these guys, all of these ones technically finished, but uh, there's just like nothing happening. Or maybe they're just all really bad at walking, which is also possible. Yeah, everyone has a little bit of a wobble dog inside of them, I think. Yeah, these ones definitely are just walking in circles at this point. <laughs> Something didn't work. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, man. Okay, so let's see. Um, yeah, so if everyone wants, I can show off some of the just generic pin gameplay real quick. That's what the people want to see. Because these these fine folks are just walking in circles at this point. So, oh yeah, we can do that real quick. Let's see. Uh, there's definitely nothing secret that I have yet in the pin gameplay, so it's probably not a big deal. Um... Yeah, so this section of the game, uh, excuse me, uh, is definitely what's farthest along so far, and it's been my core focus, but uh, there's still, like, it's still very work in progress, and the dogs are definitely not as smart as they ultimately should be. Um, really quick before I start off, do people want random dogs, or do you want, like, default gene dogs? I can do either one. So just let me know and I'll, I'll dump them out real quick. I'll build something while this is happening. Build like a... Let's see. this for now. Let's see. Sorry, let me catch up on chat real quick. <laughs> Several of each. Um, yeah, I think I can do that. I just added uh, some like controls over that stuff to my cheat engine thing, so I should be... Let's see. We'll do three defaults and we'll like three randoms. give these guys some food. I don't know where they're going to end up, so I'm just going to sprinkle some. So, uh, let's see. I'm actually going to turn off the UI real quick so we can see more. Um, so I guess I'll try to explain what's going on a little bit. Um, right now, all the dogs have the same exact personality. I haven't done any work to make those differentiable yet. It is something that I want to do eventually, but it's not something I've been able to have time for. Um, and there's not too many different behaviors that they can do, so you'll notice, or you probably noticed when they first all spawned in, they just kind of started barking. Um, the barks are probably, there's a few reasons why they could be barking. Um, one is just because, like, it's something that makes them less excited if they're too excited. Um, it's another thing, it's another possibility that they're barking because they're seeing something they don't understand, uh, which could be another dog, it could be those food cubes, uh, there's a lot of possibilities. Probably it's some combination of all those things. Um, <laughs> so you can see in the background over here, uh, this dog was sleeping and then woke up, and it was because this other dog barked nearby. Uh, so dogs have sound sensitivity right now. What they don't have currently is a way to tell other dogs that they're mad at them for waking them up. That will happen, and it's something I've done a little bit of work on, but it's not in yet. Uh, but it's definitely the goal there. Um, 
<laughs> these ones all got tired pretty quick. Uh, so long legs, some of them can reach food, some of them can't. This one isn't that tall, so you can probably reach the food just fine, but there are other ones that will definitely have problems with that. Um, one thing that's pretty broken at the moment, which is probably the biggest bug that I have, that I've had for a little bit and I haven't solved it yet. I have an idea of how to fix it, I just haven't had the time. Uh, is that if dogs get interrupted while they're trying to do something for whatever reason, either because you interrupt them or another dog does, uh, they get a negative association with that behavior. It's just kind of like an assumption that um, that behavior that they were trying to do results in like not ideal things happening to them. Um, because like maybe they're trying to eat and they try to eat the food, um, but they don't actually get anything out of it. Their kind of needs and emotions are going down while they're trying to eat it. Um, and normally they get food from it so it balances out and they say, okay, you know, eating makes me a little bit tired, but I get a lot of hunger from it, so it's good. Um, but if they get interrupted, then what can happen is that they think, oh, so eating makes me tired and I was also getting more hungry while I tried to eat, so it's really not a good thing for me to do. Um, and so uh, over time that stuff balances out and they learn kind of what most likely happens, but currently um, it's set up in such a way that if the very first time they try to do something like that it doesn't work out then they might never try to do it again uh, which is totally wrong and I need to fix it um, but it means that sometimes dogs just kind of starve to death because they didn't get food the first time uh, they tried to eat and that's really not ideal so I have some work to do in that regard but <laughs> I'm glad to hear that this is accurate to real life dog care. Also, poop is definitely something that I will have to implement at some point. Um, I have some ideas for it, but I haven't gotten to it yet. Because again, it's something that I want to make sure ties into actual gameplay, that it's not just like a visual thing that happens. <laughs> also, it's like a little bit hard to see. Um, mm -hmm in an environment like this, but uh, for something like sleeping, dogs get node preferences. So here, actually, I can probably show you. Excuse me. Um, I'm gonna turn on some debug stuff real quick. Let's see, where are we? So I just clicked on this guy in the front, um, and you can see under the hood, this is kind of like this dog's location aware part of its brain. So these are like the various places it's walked and the connections it's formed between them and then associations with certain objects. So like you can see that these nodes associate with food. So it thinks that, oh, from these nodes I can, uh, like there's food, there's food nearby. So I could go to that node and I'll be sure to find food and stuff like that. Those strengthens weaken over time. Uh, if they're not reinforced um, and they strengthen the longer that the dog is out of the location, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but stuff like sleeping ties into these nodes. So um, if a dog sleeps at a certain node, uh, and gets woken up, it might be less likely to sleep there in the future. Um, and when a dog is looking for a place to sleep, it prefers nodes that are less connected to other places, so more isolated, stuff like that. Uh, sleeping is like the only behavior that ties into that currently, but hopefully more stuff will in the future. Actually, let me turn that off. Because it eats up, it's actually a memory leak with that debug view, so I'm going to try to not crash the game. Uh, sorry, catching up on chat real quick. Will the dogs look blocky in the final product? Uh, I'm uncertain about that. I think that... I think that a lot of the charm ultimately comes from how abstract these things are, uh, because it's easier to project emotion onto something that is not realistic looking, because there's fewer assumptions about how it's supposed to behave. Uh, it's just kind of like more of a blank canvas. So I want to keep them abstract at least somewhat, no matter what happens. Um, that said, there's definitely some stuff that I want to adjust. Uh, their legs, for example, I want to make into like a single model that proportionally adapts to the proportions of these cubes, so it's more smooth instead of just like interconnecting cubes. Um, and I want to experiment with their faces a little bit more because it would be cool to be able to add customization for stuff like, uh, like ears or noses and different styles of faces and uh, snouts and stuff like that, but just like their current face setup makes it a little bit hard to do too much with that. So it's something I want to experiment with, but I don't want to lose the kind of general blocky charm that they have. So it's something I'm going to be pretty careful with going forward. Um, let's see. 
How will you develop the dogs, and do you think you'll be eventually able to train the dogs to do stuff? Um, so it's something that, like, I've been consistently thinking about it since I've started, and I've run through a lot of ideas in my head. Uh, so part of it is going to be, like, fairly passive, like, fairly environmentally oriented, which is the stuff that I've been mostly working on so far. Uh, so, like, depending on how a dog is, like, the environment that a dog's raised in, like, whether or not they meet other dogs, whether or not they see certain objects or a variety of objects, um, whether or not, uh, just, like, stuff like that uh, will affect kind of their brains as they age. So, and it currently does, it just doesn't have a huge... It doesn't change too many things at the moment, and there's not really ways to see those changes long term. Uh, so, like, if you have a dog that you raise in isolation, uh, then that dog's really not going to do well with other dogs when it eventually meets them. Um, or likewise, if you have a dog that like grows up among like among a bunch of other dogs, then it's going to be socialized and it'll be able to interact with things without getting mad at them. Uh, so there's going to be that aspect of it, just kind of like making basically environmental control. Uh, the other thing is you can kind of pick up dogs like this and like do them like uh, move them around um and doing that stops whatever behavior they're currently doing uh which as i mentioned before kind of adds an inherent negative association to that behavior because it's something that didn't work out so that's kind of a way you can kind of currently train them to stop doing certain things like if a dog's barking and you pick them up uh then they got less of a benefit from that barking than they thought they were going to get and it's something they're less likely to do in the future um so there's going to be that element but I also want to make somewhat of a more hands-on approach to this sort of thing than I currently have. Uh, with the racing, I've been thinking about having some sort of ability to kind of give commands to your dogs while they're racing. So like you could yell jump at them and they would jump and that would, you know, be able to help out when at certain points in the race uh, or like you could tell them to stop if they were about to walk straight into an obstacle that was going to move out of the way in a second, stuff like that. Um, and if I did that sort of thing, then I'd want to tie that into stuff that you did in these pens somehow. So I don't know exactly how I would kind of build that up and reinforce it, but it's something I'm thinking about. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at with that sort of stuff. And I don't know that they're going to be specifically puppies in the sense of like smaller dogs with different models, but there are definitely puppies currently in the sense that all these dogs that you're seeing right now have like very tiny like they're very young and the age of a dog's brain directly ties into lots of other statistics so like uh these guys are worse at walking and like self-correcting their rotations and stuff because they're young uh they were uh, excuse me they are uh there's just like a lot of a lot of things that don't currently tie into the age of a brain that will eventually as well um stuff like that they're like less likely to uh younger dogs are more likely to be open to new experiences older dogs are less likely that sort of thing so but again uh as always like a lot of this stuff is still conceptual and although i would like it to work and i may have an idea of how it should work <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean that it will ever work but i'm gonna try my best and get a few more guys in here But yeah, so there's not, like I said, there's not too much variety with just this pin gameplay right now. Because um, there's only kind of like five, six behaviors that they can really do. So, that's almost hungry. <laughs> so there's fun stuff to watch, uh, but it's kind of, it's all very samey after you've seen it for a certain, like after you've played this game obviously like as much as I have but even if you've played it for like an hour or so you've probably seen pretty much everything there is to see in terms of behavior so hopefully as I have more stuff that won't always be the case also dogs can navigate using pipes um, if they've gone through pipes before they remember where the entrances and exits are so they can get themselves between cages if they want to get at a location that's in a different area. Um, and yeah, all this stuff is like still fairly early too. 
So um, I'm planning, like I've been working on this for about a little over six months. Um, and based on like project estimates and stuff that I've done so far, I expect that this is gonna be like three year projects, three and a half, four year project. So it's like pretty ambitious. Um, I'd really like it to not take longer than that. Hopefully three years is like an actual <laughs> realistic target, but, and I've already tried to like inflate estimates and stuff to get to that point. Um, Cause then everything always takes way longer than you expect it to. So hopefully I won't be working on this 10 years from now. Uh, not that I don't enjoy it, but you know, it'd be really great to be able to make money at some point. So all of this stuff, like all these graphics are probably going to update. Um, and there's definitely like a lot of bugs and stuff. But yeah, um, so I don't know if there's anything else that people want to see. Uh, it's 3.24. I might just wrap this up at 3.30 um, because I have a few other things that I need to get to today uh, with the, as far as the races go because I'm trying to develop them. But if there's anything else you guys want to see before I log off, then let me know and I'll try to try to show it or any other questions or what. Um, as far as fun situations go, I have enough saved up to like self finance, like I can stay alive and pay rent and stuff and eat for the next three years. Um, but if I hire, if I want to like hire an artist, for example, um, I'm not gonna, I don't want to bring someone on with the expectation that they're going to work for free or like purely for um, part of the profit. Cause it's really not fair uh, to whoever I'm working with. Uh, so I probably, <laughs> probably need, potentially need to do some sort of funding to be able to pay, pay a salary for a collaborator, uh, for as far as hiring someone to do music. Um, again, I'd want to pay them. Uh, but that is more of something that I could budget for and be able to realistically do without outside funding. Uh, breeding mechanic. I... Let's see, I'm trying to remember the setup. I might be able to show that really quick. I'm gonna close this down. I have a debug thing that hopefully still lines up correctly. It's like super janky, but I think it'll work. Let's see. Yeah, that still lines up correctly, so this will work. Uh, cool, yeah, no, we can do, we can do breeding. Get some guys up. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can let you people, I can let you guys control this if you want, uh, just like call out, I guess right now there's not like too much variation, so I'm gonna, I'll throw this tail dog in. If there's anything that you see, like, oh, that dog looks interesting, let me know and I will throw him in the breeder. Right now this is set up that you just like throw one on either side and, uh, it spits out a bread combination of, oh my god. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. That, uh, is not... Okay, this is... No, no this, there's a reason for this. I had a, an old prefab. Uh, that was an ancient dog that no longer works correctly. Let's try that again. That was an old version. <laughs> that was bad. Dog backwards compatibility is not, uh... Not great because I add new scripts and stuff to them and there's things that are kind of required. Yeah, let's uh, let's forget we saw that. Okay, this should work better. <laughs> there, that's uh, <laughs> that's a little more in line with what I expected. <laughs> um, yeah, so what do you want? What should I what should I breed for? Sorry, this is lagging a tiny bit now that I'm streaming it, but hopefully it's not too bad for everyone. We could go for a tail, or we could go for some like thick legs or colors. We could try this. We could try this curly Q. It's kind of my favorite tail right now. And this one has it as well. There's still a few things I need to fix with the breeding. Or not really fix, but add. 
Um, none of it should be that noticeable. Oh my god, this is really slow. I'm sorry. I feel like it's just because I'm streaming it, because it's usually not this bad. So I'm just going to kind of delete a few off the bat, I think. All the dogs are safe. They're all recycled. Dog reuse. Let's see. Let's try to make a. We'll go for some lighter. Let's get some pale, pale dogs. Ugh. This is yeah. This is definitely because I'm streaming it because I've been able to run this many dogs without any issues in the past. Um, like, my computer can definitely support more than this. So, uh, there's also a lot of optimization I definitely need to do still. It's not ideal. Um, okay, so we got, let's see, we have this one with a pattern. Yeah, we definitely do a, sp a spot dog. Stick them in there. <laughs> yeah, everyone likes the spots. Um, I don't know what else. Which other one? I guess it doesn't really matter too much. We'll do this one because I like how stubby it is. And take some initiative. Ugh, this speed is very frustrating though. Um, ugh, man. This is very annoying. You know, I'm just gonna like, right off the bat, delete a bunch of random ones, and we're just gonna have to live with the results, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, as far as optimizations go, uh, most of the problems with speed come from the fact that I'm doing a shit ton of ray casts uh, to make these dogs like correctly figure out when to take the stabilizing steps and do lots of other stuff like buck when stuff hits their backs or bellies. Um, so a lot of those are necessary, but there's definitely optimization I can do in terms of like how often those are going on and uh, how many of them are happening based on the context and there's a lot of stuff like that. I just murdered a lot of dogs, but it's okay, because like I said, they're all recyclable. All dogs are recycled. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't know. There's a lot of good options here. I'm gonna take- we've been going with these spots, but there's- these spots don't have as much variation as a lot of things do, so I'm gonna take this kind of scaled one. And then we're also- I'm gonna take, this is a pretty good striped guy, so I'm gonna try this. Ugh, oh, dog heaven would be so sad. Or maybe it wouldn't be, maybe it would be happy. It's hard to say. Oh my god. Okay. Let's see. A lot of good dogs here. <laughs> um, here, I'm gonna go a little bit quicker on these. I'll take this one. Oop. I know we're losing some good dogs in that call, but it's just gotta be done. Um, actually, can I... Ugh. This breeding stuff that I have set up, I should probably add a variable for how many dogs it produces. Right now it just does, like, hard-coded 20, but clearly that causes you symptoms. Okay. I don't know if you've noticed, but this one has some extra legs, which is pretty awesome. However, it's an interesting proposition to try to breed it when things are already going slow, because an extra pair of legs is gonna mean more performance issues. So, it's something to think about. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to, I'm just gonna make an executive decision and say that we have to not breed this guy because I think the stream will be sad if I, <laughs> if I try to create 20 of those. This one is getting kind of skinny, so I'm going to put it in there, which is pretty good. 
and I like this one's down. Okay. Let's see. Oh, hold on. So some of these are getting like really tiny, which I like. So I think we're gonna keep this one. And this one as well. Now oh, we got some color mutation going on over here. Some good possibilities. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely getting some tiger dogs. Hmm. So we're gonna throw this one in. And it's a good partner. Maybe this one. I like these legs actually. Let's go for these these bright blue legs. Yeah, uh, and yeah, jeans for front and back leg thickness are separate, so they will not necessarily be uniform. Uh, and right now, they do come in pairs, so the front legs will always be the same thickness, and the back legs will always be the same thickness, but uh, I am planning on... One of the things on my list is to do, like, a rare mutation for uneven leg thickness. I think that would be kind of fun, but it's not currently in the game. Let's see. Mm, this one's pretty good shade of yellow. <laughs> Let's do... I'll do this one. Actually, no. I want this one. Oh, this one's kind of like radioactive colored. Wow, these dogs are so ferocious. I'm getting a little scared, you guys. Uh, actually, another thing I can do, I'm gonna disable the UI, or the uh, artificial intelligence right now. I think that'll help with performance a little bit, because um, we're just doing the breeding. Let's see, it's a good. Do we want to go branching tail route, or do we want to stay? Could just stay. Yeah, these dogs kind of start out as tigers, and now I don't know what they're turning into. They're kind of like... They're pretty mutated. Oh, yeah, this one is definitely the best so far. Oh, man. I, I love these multi-leg dogs, and if I wasn't streaming this, I would definitely keep that one, but... Poor computer. It's not having it. <laughs> um, I don't have a specific model for recessive traits. I kind of have stuff that makes it work like that, though. The way that a lot of these things are set up, specifically the patterns, is... Uh, the genes that go into determining like the actual pattern uh, are the same no matter what type of pattern uh, the dog actually has, but the type of pattern that a dog has is determined by a separate set of genes that, um, depending on what, um, de basically there's a set of like pattern, there's a set of genes for each pattern, um, and depending on which uh, set of those genes has the highest value we branch on what type of pattern we're creating. Um, so you could have a dog that has, I guess, technically a recessive, uh, super cool, like, spotted pattern going on that you just wouldn't be able to see until uh, its spot gene kind of, like, got bumped up a bit, if that makes sense. Um, but yes, I can... This spotted one can be bred. And there's some good purple legs going on here. 
Dogs cannot currently have multiple patterns, but I really want to support that. Um, I tried to put it in very briefly, um, and it worked, but it looked awful. So I have to figure out a way to make it like actually look nice. So I might have to do like some sort of blending. Um, I don't know. I have to experiment with it because I can definitely do it. It just doesn't look good. Um, right now, dogs don't have personalities uh, from their genes. I'm definitely going to be adding it, uh, but it's not in right now. Uh, so I haven't, I'm not 100% sure how I want to handle that yet. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it so that the two use the same genes or some of the same genes, or if they're just completely separate and, you know, they get transferred because that's how breeding works. Uh, I need to think about it more. I'm not sure yet. But it would be, so I mean, you'll end up in a situation where like, just because you've been breeding stuff, like the spotted dogs will be more likely to be ferocious or be nice or whatever. But that's just kind of like happenstance because of the breeding results you happen to get. Um, the way that things are like currently set up, it wouldn't be that like any player who ever bred spotted dogs would always also get that personality trait. But that might be okay. So I'm, I'm not decided yet. Actually, I hate these brown colors. Let's not do that. Yeah, this one has really good legs. Okay, I'm gonna say that we can do five more pieces of breeding and then I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce, I think. So let's make it good. Let's try to get some like really uniform long legs. So that's one, this is four left. Let's see where we get. This one's pretty good. Ooh, I don't know if you guys can see this. There are two tails going on here though, which is <laughs> it's pretty wonky looking, but it's totally there. <laughs> Might have to keep that. Oh, this one's pretty awesome. Oh man, okay, two tails is probably gonna have to stay. All these, all these ones have, have two tails going on. We kinda, okay, we'll stick with that. Take this one and because I noticed this one first, we'll put him in too. Okay, so three left. <laughs> oh man, these multi-tailed beasts. This one's pretty good. I would like to look into adding ears at some point, but I don't know that it's going to look any good with the current head setup, so I might need to do some iteration there, but I would like to look into ears. Also, I don't know if everyone's aware, but the most important feature of ears for dogs in real life is that they sometimes get turned inside out, so just, uh, just saying that that is something I'm aware of. And it is important to me. Okay, two more. These are kind of like glacial dogs right now. They started out as cheetahs, or, or not cheetahs. Or maybe cheetahs. I don't remember. They started out as some sort of like ferocious cat, but now they're like. I feel like this is something you would see on a mountain in a JRPG, which I'm okay with. There is a leopard. I don't know if it has. Does it have two tails? It has two little Pomeranian tails. It looks very strange with those. It looks <laughs> it is very bizarre looking. 
I guess we gotta throw it in though. Actually, uh, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna hold this until chat catches up. Am I breeding this Pomeranian two-tailer or am I sticking with the wispy tails? <laughs> okay, it's a pretty good response around this dog. So it might be going in. Okay, there's only gonna be one more breeding round after this, so we gotta be careful. Can't mess it up. I also don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that I have a few memory leaks going on here, so it's possible that things are not at their quickest because of that either. These are some pretty good dogs, I have to say. Let's just get a closer look. The two-tailed Pomeroni ones look better than... Like, close up, that looks pretty great, actually. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I haven't seen those in action before today, so it's pretty exciting. It's a very rare event, everyone. But I don't know. I don't know. It's, you, you, I need to be told which ones to breed. So this is the last round. So it's pretty important that it's what the people want. There's a lot of good options here. We could go many different paths. So yeah, we can sing a vote for this white one. So this baby can can be moved to the side but who will be its bride kind of into this one I don't know what you guys think we're just gonna throw this one in right now just so we don't forget Okay, here we go. It's the last one. Oh, and then I get gotta get back to dog racing work. Oh man, I don't know if you're seeing this because you haven't caught up yet, but there's a pretty good thing happened. Hold on. Let me pause this before everything breaks. So I'm gonna have to delete a few dogs so that we'll make. I want to make sure that we get the one that I care about though. Uh, so we can get out of here. And I don't care about you. Okay, let's see. Okay, hold on. <laughs> there are a few performance issues. Don't worry about it. I'm sure I'll be fine. Okay. I guess I should probably turn AI on real quick. That seems like an important thing to do. Look at those tails. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> that was a pretty good note to end on, I think. Like, this one got just a massive mutation. Okay, I'm gonna let this run for a few more minutes and then I'm gonna kill the stream. Thank you so much everybody for coming and checking this out with me. I'm glad there are actually people here like watching and engaging. It was pretty fun. I'll have to do something like this again sometime. Oh wait, hold on, really quick. I was just about to kill the stream, but I noticed. I think there are three tails going on here. Oh, there's so many mysteries here. You just gotta look. 
so many things to discover. Oh my god. Yeah, this one has three. And that might have something to do with the fact that the performance is even slower than usual, that there are a lot of tails going on here. Also, I will just say that what we are looking at right now is pretty much ungifable. <laughs> there is, like, way too much movement. <laughs> but, okay. I think for real this time, the dogs are uh, going on the recycler. So, thanks again, everyone, for showing up, and I will see you guys later.